Okay, good morning, guys. My name is Gavin. Welcome to Alpha Chain's weekly market brief. It is Monday, the 21st of March, uh, just past the UK open. So it's around 8.20 a.m. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll cover what happened last week and what to expect for the week ahead. We'll look at some of the charts as well as maybe bring up the economic calendar, see if there's any pending data that we need to be aware of for the week ahead. Um, and where do we start with? Let's start with the US markets, looking at these two top uh, um, charts here. The, the one we'll focus on potentially is the S&P 500. Now, with the S&P 500 where it is, and as you can see, the most recent week was quite a bullish week. We had a very strong week last week in regards to risk on appetite and uh, equity markets all moving in a bid fashion. So overall, markets surged last week, and that was largely due to the Federal Reserve, which announced that it would raise its target rate range, uh, the federal funds rate, uh, by 25 basis points, and it will be between 0 0.25 to 0.5%. This was expected. In fact, it was expected a higher rate hike. So they've not gone to the highest point, right? They've just given us a, a range, a range that they're targeting their rates to maintain between 0 0.25 to 0.5%. Now, it's their first rate hike, I believe, since 2018. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the, the, the reason they are in this tightening cycle at this current moment is because of inflation. So they're trying to tame inflation. So this was the first of what is expected many to be, okay? Uh, it, there are, I do remember Jerome Powell stating in his presser that there are another seven uh, uh, meetings. There are another seven meetings uh, this year and there it could be a rate rise with each uh, meeting. OK, so currently what the markets are pricing in are six more rate hikes, six more rate hikes for this year alone. That is a lot of rate hikes in a, in a very short period of time. So that is a, a very hawkish, and a very aggressive uh, Fed, a central bank. OK, it is also expected that they will look to adjust their quantitative tightening as well. OK, so they're going to reduce their... Uh, their balance sheet debt, okay, the amount of uh, QE that they've done for many years, a lot of that's come to an end, uh, and now they're going to reduce their balance sheet as well. So we're expecting not only hikes, uh, but we're also expecting a reduction in on their balance sheet. So this is a very, very hawkish Fed, which led to a bit of a risk on factor. Now, the assumption originally was that a lot of a lot of the um, a lot of the initial hawkishness would have been removed or managed a little bit better as we've got this issue between uh, uh, geopolitical issue between Russia and Ukraine and these sanctions being applied and we're seeing prices of certain commodities really gaining uh, uh, and moving in a in a very bullish tone. We thought Fed may come out a little bit more dovish. But they went against the markets and we're seeing a very hawkish Fed. So it led, led to a very risk on factor, okay, very strong risk on factor. So where is the SP 500? Now, if I just extend this trend line in place, right? So this is the trend line I had in place. We had breached through the trend line now, okay? So we have breached through the, uh, the downtrend line in place. Uh, we have a very strong bullish breakout. We're expecting the next key level will be around the 4,600, okay? So just shy of the 4,600 figure. But we had two touches in the region over here. So there could be a potential another touch here. There is a small little bit of a resistance potentially uh, blocking sort of, you know, uh, any you know, large gains in a very short period of time. I think there might be a little bit indecision. Uh, and then we may go to test that, that 4,600 figure. But we did have a very impressive breakout okay now the question is is this the end of this overall downtrend if we switch over to the daily time frame looking at what we've seen so far taking it from the, the highs reaching a low of almost 15 percent with the s p 500 so 14.77 percent uh, of a correction and this is where we are at the moment so 
you know, that's half the amount, right? So seven, just over 7%. Um, uh, we're only just 7% down from those all time highs. Now, uh, how many of you are bullish? For the guys that are in the chat, in this session live, how many of you guys are bullish and optimistic for uh, the months ahead? Or you see this as potentially a dead cap bounce, right? We're just seeing a bit of, a bit of profit being taken, a bit of uh, optimism coming through. Where last week a lot of the uh, there was a lot of positive talks that came through between Russia and Ukraine, uh, which didn't actually come to sort of any conclusion. Nothing was confirmed. Just a little bit of should we say misinformation? Shall we say at some points uh, misinformation or uh, an exaggerated uh, view uh, of, of something coming. Uh, or something was expected, but it didn't come through. Um, yeah, how many of you are hawkish, guys? How many of you think that we're going to see a recovery in equity markets? How many of you are bearish? Do let me know in the chat, guys. Do let me know in the chat. But okay, that's the S&P 500. Now, what's happened overnight? What's happened overnight? So we do know that last week, last week was the best week this year alone. Okay, so last week was the best week this year alone. And the best uh, week since um, November of 2020. Okay, so it's the best week since the uh, since November 2020. Okay, but you know what's happening so far? As you can see, the markets have opened and they pulled back a little bit. Okay, so not a lot of volatility coming in from the weekend. There's not a lot of news that came through from the weekend. Uh, but what we do know is that we pulled back a little bit because last week was also a positive week for Asia Pacific region as well. Uh, so if I bring up, let me just switch it over to different assets. Let's have a look. I may have it here. What I'm looking for. So looking, maybe. So the Hang Seng. So we're looking at sort of um, Asia Pacific region. If you're looking at Hang Seng and you're looking at the Nikkei, uh, we had a bit of a bearish move taking place, most importantly in the Hang Seng. Okay, so, uh, and that was largely due to these Chinese stocks overnight. Uh, and once again, we've just seen another slide to the downside. Okay, and the ones that were most hit were tech companies as well. And this was due to um, the Evergrande, Evergrande, the property developer in China, being suspended, being suspended from trading in its shares. Okay, so it's raising those fresh fears uh, about that about the property sector in China once again. So that was uh, the only sort of high relevant news that came from the Asia Pacific region uh, overnight. So that's leading to European markets this morning. That's leading to European markets this morning. With a bit of a, uh, a bearish sell-off, with a bit of a bearish test, but we're actually almost really recovered. So we gap lower, so you can see markets gap a little bit lower, pushed a little bit uh, down uh, to not the key level, but down as low as 73.82. Now we're almost looking to test those prior highs. Okay, so uh, still there is more of a risk on uh, play in the European markets, but it started down. We started the markets down. Okay, moving over, let's move over to a different assets. Uh, let's switch my screen. Let's come over to the eight. Okay, looking at uh, the dollar index. Now, I might switch over to slightly higher time frame. Let's go to the four hour time frame. Okay, so the US dollar has been retreating over the last few weeks. Okay, so it's giving away some of those gains that we've seen over the last few months. Uh, and this is quite normal. Don't forget about correlation. You guys must be aware of correlation with the overall market, okay? So with high beta types of situations, you need to be aware of those take precedence. So when markets have a very risk-on mood, they're in a risk-on mood, you're going to see that hinder uh, certain safety currencies, okay? Safety currencies, safe haven types of assets. So that's what we've seen in the dollar dollar index so far. So dollar index, you know, once testing highs of 99.50, close enough to 99.50, 
we've, we're back down at around 98.20 handle at the moment. Okay, so we tested the 98 handle twice. It's forming a range of, so, of sorts, so it's not really bro broken a prior low yet. Uh, but yes, we're moving sideways. We're consolidating at this current moment. Yes, the Fed was hawkish, but perhaps the market doesn't see it as, as hawkish. As I mentioned, you know, it was once forecasted there could be seven, eight, nine rate hikes from a number of institutions outlining that over uh, the next uh, few years. But it seems that a lot of it's going to be front loaded. So they're looking to ramp up in, uh, uh, the interest rates only on the very short term end, whereas the medium term to long term, if you look at the yield market the yields, um, uh, is flattening out, it's, it has flattened. So yes, um, dollar, not so much uh, bullish or on uh, in a bid move. So mostly moving sideways with the view that the Fed are not likely to be as hawkish as what was previously expected, even though they came out quite hawkish. Yeah. And also, just looking over to maybe the euro. Let's have a look at the euro. Okay, so this is where the euro is uh, on the four-hour time frame. We tested that significant support level. I do remember if I maybe switch over to the weekly time frame, which I've once shown you. So look how relevant trend lines are, right? So we spoke about this. We saw it in this region here, testing this key level here, and it didn't really breach through this uh, uh, trend line. Didn't come back to test a prior support. But we had a very nice bullish bounce, right? And look at the type of candlestick that did test that level. Quite a volatile move, but overall a doji type of formation. Okay. Well, open and close is not pretty much on the same price level, but overall, in regards to the size of the, the wicks, uh, I'll still class this as a, as a doji, testing the 109 uh, handle. And then we've had the prior week, obviously, a very bullish week for the euro. Yep. So yes, in the very long term, it is bearish, but we've seen a potential key point being formed here on the weekly time frame. And the question is, is this the bottom now? Is this the bottom? Are we going to see markets back, trading back up those highs again? Oh, there's a lot of headway uh, or headwind in the, uh, that uh, ahead of us, right? So, okay. Now, two key elements here. One, of course, Russia-Ukraine situation is going to impact the euro. You know, this is happening in the euro block area, right? Eastern Europe. Okay. So there is that factor, right? This geopolitical risk could have a significant hindrance in the strength of euro in the upcoming few months, as well as the ECB. Now we know, you know, for example, I'm going to touch on Bank of England, but Bank of England have raised their rates. Um, we know that the Fed have also raised their rates and are very hawkish. The ECB are still quite dovish, okay? So they're not as hawkish as expected. Uh, and the market doesn't feel that they are being hawkish enough either. And that's why we've seen this large downward move taking place, okay? So just be mindful of those two key elements. You need to be aware of the central banks and their, their positioning, as well as this geopolitical factor, especially when you're trading the euro. So the euro could be one of those currencies now. We could see a lot more volatility in comparison to other currencies, okay? And that can, that can be seen in the prior week's trading. Because the prior week trading, the market, the market opened at a price level. If I just hover over this, um, oh, it's not going to give that information, is it? Uh, it usually does. But let me see in this chart now. Okay, so let's assume the price, just looking at this key level here, uh, one spot zero nine two, uh, yeah, so one spot zero nine twenty, right? From the open, it went down to test a low of one oh eight oh five, one oh eight oh five, then achieved uh, uh, the high of one eleven twenty, and then eventually closed at one zero nine one zero. Okay, so. A very volatile session. You can see, sort of, you know, we're trading between a, you know, almost a um, uh, two to three hundred pip sort of range there. Okay, so two to three hundred pip range, right? And it wasn't in that order, so don't take it as if it was in that order, uh, right? So there would have been a lot of, you know, movement and fluctuation in between that, uh, but still, it just shows you the amount of volatility in that single weekly candle formation. Okay, switching over, let's switch over to the Bank of England, and of course. Looking at sterling, now, this is where sterling is at this current moment. Okay, 
a bit of a okay so on the weekly time frame it was a bullish tone overall okay and that was expected we did expect that right because you know the bank of england raised rates for the third time in a row okay bank of england raised rates for the third time in a row but we expected that that was already priced in okay that was already discounted in markets what was relevant was the bank vote okay and we had one person dissent we had one member one mpc member dissent as well as the the tone the tonality right wasn't as hawkish as they previously were because of the ongoing geopolitical situation so that put a little bit of doubt in the markets that put a little bit of doubt in the market so it wasn't such a large bullish move in comparison to the prior kind of prior weekly candle which is a very bearish candle so we could be testing this key level here at this current moment we're probably testing this prior level of support around the 13160 handle okay we're seeing a little bit of indecision forming at this current moment there could be more of a downside move right the question is is that it for the bank of england will they raise rates at the next meeting right that's it's a, it's a key question now it's a key question okay uh, let's switch over. Uh, let's have a look. What do I also want to have a look at? Maybe we have a look at the volatility index. Okay, so just bring up the volatility index. Uh, at this current moment, uh, let me just full screen. Now, this is based on the sort of weekly time frame, and you can see uh, this is you know 18th in the 18th to the second or oh, 16th actually, 18th through to the 16th of March. Right, 18th of Feb through to 16th of March. It's where, uh, no, hang on, this was uh, COVID. Okay, I think I'm looking too far back because of the weekly time frame. But uh, where are we at this current moment? Okay, now uh, let's, zo let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Uh, so, volatility index, which is our fair gauge, okay, it gives us an indication to how much fair is priced into the markets, how much, you know, a bit of panic uh, is there in the markets. The markets are performing well, we're more risk on, equities are likely to move to the upside, you'll see this move lower, okay, you will see the VIX move lower. If this moves higher, and we know there's more fear in the markets, therefore equities uh, will slide, and we expect precious metals and safe safe currencies uh, to outperform. At the current moment, you know, we're, we're seeing a dip, right, so reaching a high of almost 32, so reaching a high of almost 32, right, and then it slid down to around the 23, so just, you know, done. just through the 24 handle, it's bouncing up a little bit higher. The question is, are we going to move lower? Okay, I'm going to move lower. It's, you know, so far, it's moving in the right direction. Okay, so far, it's moved in the right direction. Uh, do remember, this is sort of, you know, going in line, the weekly hasn't even closed yet. Okay? But we have come off those highs. We have come off the highs of 32. So, yeah. Uh, looking at currencies uh, uh, on a weekly time frame here. So the dollar uh, 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 on a week on week basis has been outperforming. Then it's the euro, sterling, and then the yen. Okay, so yeah, so that's the sort of the view at the current moment. Okay, let's switch over. Let's switch over to um, commodity markets. Let's have a look at the commodity markets. Let's come over back to this side of things. Yeah, let me just make sure on the right screen. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, uh, maybe we'll start with precious metals, right? Full screen here. Okay, so maybe switch up to a four hour time frame. Gold, let's talk gold. Okay, so overall, pre, you know, precious metals have re retraced a lot of the head gains that we'd seen in the, in the prior few weeks. Okay. Um, and it, it it shows it shows once again that the that one of the first asset classes uh, uh, to respond to the Fed is the metals. Okay, so it's, you know precious metals are certainly responding to the Fed. You know it's become very clear that in the short term, right? That, as I mentioned earlier, that yields and we're talking about real yields, okay, in particular can have immediate effects on precious metal prices. So bonds. Uh, uh, bonds are very important to, um, uh, you know, the, the, the key factor with bonds and bond traders out there, what do they do? 
bond traders, all they focus on is inflation, GDP, inflation, GDP. That's what they're pricing in all the time. It's those key factors. Yes, there are other factors that they look at, but the two major factors that any bond traders be focused on is inflation and GDP. And so what we're seeing is in the yields, uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, yields are facing this bearish long-term outlook. Okay, the bearish long-term outlook is what, what I'll probably suggest there. Um, so one, we've got a very high inflation, which is forcing the Fed uh, and other central banks to tighten far too aggressively uh, than the markets want there to be, right? And the markets are quickly pricing this information in. And the question is, is this going to be a policy error by these central bankers, right? What's more important to them? Pushing us into a potential recession, right? Uh, because, you know, what, what happens when you raise rates so quickly? It just, you're, you're tightening, you're making it harder for liquidity to go out into the system, okay? So they're tightening out, tightening liquidity. And also banks are less likely to, uh, to lend, okay? They're less likely to lend. Individuals want to save more and spend less on the economy, okay? So they're likely to save as well because the rates are uh, better than spend their money into the economy. So that's going to potentially cause GDP issues, so growth issues, right? We're going to see at the same time, um, less investments being uh, formed is going to have an impact in the housing market. Is that a potential route into inflation? And that's, uh, sorry, in, into a recession is the key point there. So yes, you know, what, what are your thoughts, guys? What are your thoughts? Do you believe that, we're, that what the central banks are doing is a policy error? Or you, do you believe they are doing the right thing? Yeah, let us know. Let us know. Okay. Right. Uh, so yes, as I mentioned, so markets are now pricing in the, the short-term rates. The short-term rates uh, uh, um, are going to be higher, and they're moving aggressively higher. On the, if you look at the yields, and then the medium to long term is much lower to where where, where we where we are. So you can almost see we have a, uh, an upward sloping right in the first five to sort of within the first one to two year, sort of up to the two year mark, and thereafter it's flattening out significantly. We haven't seen the inverse yet. The inverse has happened already a few times, and generally that happens, you know, sometime before it. The question is, is this going to lead us into a recession? Let's see. Okay. Coming over to the gold markets, looking at what we've seen so far over here, we've just seen a substantial correction from testing those, almost testing the prior highs, okay? With an almost test of those prior highs, we've had a much larger correction occurring. And overall, it was a... It will, it's, if you look at the weekly, the big view, you know, it's only a couple of candles. Okay, it's only a couple of candles, right? So we're a big move to the upside, bit of a, uh, a risk on mood last week, bit of a correction occurring. The breakout still has happened, right? We have broken out of this key level here. The question is, you know, is this going to be a larger uh, a double top pattern taking place on the weekly time frame? If we, but I would need to see start to, start to look for lower lows and lower highs. Then I could say, okay, yeah, we've got a, a very bearish move occurring. But at this moment, I am more bullish than bearish, especially with the geopolitical uh, uh, catalyst in, in the background as well. Okay, switching over to another commodity. Switching over to another commodity. Let's have a look at the oil markets. Okay. The four-hour time frame. Um, now we spoke uh, quite a lot about this, right? So we've seen a, a substantial correction occurring, right? We saw this correction occurring, and that was largely due to, firstly, we had um, we had sanctions being applied um, to Russia, right? Sanctions being applied to Russia, but the only key element to that sanction was that the U.S. were likely to ban. Uh, um, uh, their oil, but no other nations followed suit. No other nations also followed through with that. Okay, so it was only the US. It's only coming to light over the weekend now that um, that uh, 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 um, the ECB uh, are considering an embargo. Okay, that they are considering a ban uh, of shipment of oil. But again, I'll be hesitant if that actually occurs, but that is what's leading to a bit of a bullish move is what, what, is what we're seeing at this current moment. So last week, risk on factors, uh, you know, what, the, the main theme that came from last week is that 
you know, a part, uh, uh, 30 million individuals in China are going into lockdown. The demand for oil is going to, obviously uh, for them, they're going to lose, um, it's going to be less, we're going to see sort of uh, prices move higher. And now we're seeing a potential uh, European embargo being applied on Russia, which may lead to the sort of next bullish outcome. From a technical standpoint, if you're trading some technical, we spoke about this last week, you know, potential double bottom over here, wait for the breakouts of the prior highs. And that's what we've seen over here. Very clean play uh, uh, in regards to sort of a key level of support being tested, which was the 95 handle. Okay, I do remember speaking to some of you guys and you was looking to buy in and you was buying in when it got to 100, but then it broke through. But again, you've got to have rules in place, right? You've got to have these rules in place, which allows you to add into another position if you're, you know, um, if you still feel that the trade idea applies, uh, especially when you see prices in this region over here and it's sort of formed a significant support level at the 95 handle, and then you had the breakout the prior high. That would have certainly been another option to trade it to the long side and get in on, uh, on this position. But yeah, oil is moving in another bull trend. Okay. And commodities are quite cyclical as well. They're very cyclical. So you see these trends play and they play for some time as well. Okay. All right. Uh, let's switch over to cryptocurrencies. Let's have a quick look at crypto assets. Uh, let me just share the right screen. Okay, share number two. Okay, yeah, screen two. Yeah. Okay, so two key markets that I generally always keep an eye on is Ethereum and Bitcoin. Uh, they're both highly correlated, guys, both highly positively correlated. Okay, so uh, just be mindful of that. I'm just looking at which one has the most better, a better technical setup. I mean, what can I say about the crypto space? Okay, it just seems that we're just still trading in a broadly very large sideways pattern. Okay, and we're we're in this consolidation stage. We're just waiting for bigger bigger breakout. Okay, we need a much bigger breakout. Okay, yes, last week we rallied. Why do you think we rallied? Why do you think we rallied? Remember high beta. Okay, high beta is key. What an individual asset does in it. How often does it correlate to a much sort of broader market? Okay, so a broader focus there. Now, what we know is last week was risk on. When risk is you know uh, at play, markets are willing to take a risk. What tends to happen? Let's find the most riskiest asset. I might allocate some of my capital in the most riskiest asset, and that being the cryptocurrency markets. Okay, so it's not being seen, clearly not, it's not being seen as a safe haven. We're seeing this as a high risk asset class. When markets are optimistic and they're happy to take some risk, they will go into cryptocurrencies. And that's all we saw from last week's session. Okay, but overall, it's still trading in this range. We're back above the 40K mark, which is, yeah, a key level, right? We're back above the 40K mark. But again, we've not gone on to really breach through the 4250 uh, or 42500 level or anywhere close to 45, uh, 44, five, uh, 500 level. So yeah, those would be sort of two key levels to keep an eye on if you're looking at Bitcoin is the price of this key level of resistance here. Let me just put a horizontal array in this region here, okay? So ideally you want to sort of look at price breaking through the 42,500 figure or 42,600 figure. Uh, and then we're on our way up to the 44,500 figure. Uh, yeah, I mean, so, you know, we have these higher lows being formed, okay? So because this this is a higher low comparison to the prior, so it's this, so it's this. This also seems like that at this current moment. So moving in the right direction, overall, a much larger uh, consolidation taking place in this higher time frames. Um, so moving on, um, let's bring up the economic calendar. this week right okay so we know that uh, there was a bank holiday over in japan right so we're starting a week off with um, holiday uh, over in uh, asia Pac. um okay you know after a very strong gains for the equity markets last week i i do think that we're moving into a more indecisive trading environment right european markets open a little bit negative but it seems like we've already almost testing that prior higher again. So it's starting to almost shift from 
you know, are we now continuing the bullish optimism from last week? Or are we going to see markets maybe range for some period of time till new catalyst, new information comes through? That's to be for, you know, to be expected. Okay, so let's see what takes place with this. There are heightened reports, as I've already mentioned, you know, of uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainian's president, you know, are not yet ready to meet and discuss the situation. Um, so we're not sure what's taking place with these peace talks that we've heard so much about. I think there's been four or five meetings already. Um, they've still, you know, we're, we're, it seems that each meeting, they, you know, they, they, they come to some better understanding, but it just doesn't mean that, you know, it ends there, okay? Um, this is going to continue for some time, um, as forecasted by some key institutions, actually. Oil prices, as I mentioned, are on the up again. But just again, there are reports of the EU considering an embargo on Russian oil exports. So just be mindful of that as well, okay? Uh, and that's going to lead to, again, um, again, a very, very bullish uh, uh, price action in, in uh, the price of oil. Okay. Um, in addition to that, ahead wise, from a sort of global standpoint, global political standpoint, we do have a, uh, a summit meeting, okay? So the G7 sort of summit uh, meeting that's gonna be taking place, but that's the sort of towards the end of the week. Okay? That's towards the end of the week. But it's worth noting, this is a, you know, as we're sort of living in these times where Russia is invading Ukraine, a lot of high uh, risk from a geopolitical standpoint. Uh, there was even discussions of, you know, a month ago, nuclear, um, um, so yeah, um, this G7 meeting could be a very important one. What well, I do know, do know also, is that Biden will hold a phone call, a phone call with some of his European counterparts today, um, uh, and this is taking place while EU foreign and defence ministers meet up in Brussels. Uh, so this, it seems like there's going to be sort of a, a lot of high stakes diplomacy taking place in the background there, uh, and that's sort of uh, with the EU, NATO, and then we have the G7. In Brussels at the end of the week. Data wise, there's not a lot of high impact data to be expected. Okay. Now, what we can see, if you just look through, is speeches. Okay. We've got President Lagarde, Powell, uh, we've got a lot of speeches over here again. Um, so just be mindful for the week ahead. I'm seeing a lot of speeches taking place. Okay. There's a lot of speeches taking place. As we progress towards the latter part of the week, um, not only do we have all these speeches, uh, but just be mindful of some of the PMI data that's coming out as well. So that's for both services and manufacturing. So we've got a lot of um, uh, PMI data uh, being released. Uh, and then towards the end of the week, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, uh, we have the G7 sort of meeting taking place as well. OK, so uh, apart from that, a lot of the focus is going to be in regards to these uh, meetings taking place between NATO, EU, and the US, and also any ongoing situations, of course, with Russia and Ukraine. That's it for me, guys. Enjoy the upcoming trading week. Um, it could be a very volatile session. Keep an eye out in the oil markets. Be aware of all the speeches that come through as well. I don't see there's going to be any changes in the stance of these um, central bankers. OK, so it's more likely that they'll just follow sort of the same rhetoric that they've mentioned previously in minutes and in presses. So, yeah, um, uh, just be aware of the, the most important ones. Right. So when we have Andrew Bailey speaking, I believe tomorrow, I think we have Andrew Bailey speaking. No, Wednesday. OK, so we've got Andrew Bailey speaking Wednesday. We've got Powell today and on Wednesday. Uh, we've got Lagarde today and tomorrow. So, yeah, just be aware of. Um, those members uh, uh, speaking as well. Okay, that's it for me, guys. Enjoy the upcoming week. Uh, happy to address any questions. If you want to put some questions in the chat room, I'll, I can go through some questions. We've got five minutes before we end the session. But once again, thank you for joining in uh, uh, and enjoy the upcoming training week. Any questions, reach out to me.